Hi YouTubers, I am Javier Ligny and I'll show you today how to brew a beautiful beer at home. The type of brewing that we'll be doing today is called a smash. That stands for single malt and single hop. For the malt we'll be using Mars Otter and for the hops we'll be using Chinook. If you're not familiar with this brewing style you may ask yourselves why would you only use one mold and one hop? Well, there's a number of reasons why you may find it interesting. First, if you want to get to know the properties and characteristics of a concrete grain better, then it's better to try it alone. And the same applies to hops. Now, for some advanced brewers, this is also helpful for them to experiment on the yeast. That's too much for me for the time being. I barely know some grains and some hops. So as you can see, this brewing style is very versatile. It can be used by a wide range of home brewers, from beginners to advanced senior brewers, guru brewers. The other reason why you may want to try a smash is if you only have one grain and one type of hops at home and you want to brew. Well, it is entirely possible. Actually, what I consider more relevant about this brewing style is that it proves that you can make great beer only using one grain and one hop. So before going to the kitchen and start brewing, I'd like you to see the dark ale. It's been fermenting for a week now. I have noticed in the last couple of days a considerable reduction in the intervals of the bubbles. That may be a sign that fermentation is getting to an end, but in any case, you should never trust that indicator as an effective proof that your fermentation is over. Remember, only a hydrometer reading will tell you when it's done. So, without further ado, let's get brewing! So here we are in the kitchen. Let me give you a quick overview of the ingredients we'll be using. First off, water. We are particularly interested in the bottle because we will use this as a fermenter. 700 grams of Maris Hutter, 20 grams of Chinook hops in several additions, 200 grams of cane sugar. You may say why? Because life tastes a little better with sugar. And of course our yeast. This is an S33. I chose this one because it suits most of beer styles and it says that it's particularly recommended for strong ales. So let's get brewing! Cheers! If you can find this beer in your local supermarket, I definitely recommend it. It's incredibly hoppy, very pleasant, very nice, well balanced. It's, it's one of my favorite IPAs. So let's get it on! Okay, so we pour the whole content of the 5 liter bottle in the pot. And we're gonna get that to 65 degrees. In the meantime, we're gonna measure our grains, for which we're gonna use a scale. Set to zero, so it's 700 grams of Marisata. I guess I'll have to do it in two parts. Let's say 400 and then 300. Okay, so 400. Let's put it in the green bag okay this goes in here as well okay well it's like a pink panther joke thumbs up for the pink panther okay so now 300 grams more All right, there it is. So in it goes. Now we just gotta wait until the water is at 65 degrees and we will start the mash. See you in a few. Okay, so the water is now at 65 degrees and in they go. This will be a 60 minute mash after which we will add our hops. And there is particularly not much to it. The key here, and what I'm really aiming to, is getting a really, really, really clear, pale beer, like this one. So every now and then I'll be pushing the grains here and there for them to mash properly. And probably you've heard me say this more than once, but now it really smells amazing. You can see that the color is really, really, really pale. That's my goal. 
and I've read that if you want to have a pale ale, the key is not to let it caramelize. And how you can prevent it from caramelizing? Well, keeping a good control of your temperature. It should never go above 65 degrees. Nearly half an hour has passed. I've kept the color really well. The smell keeps being amazing. I got the feeling that this is going to be a beautiful beer. Okay, so one hour has passed. I've kept the temperature really stable, no more than 66. So now the mesh is over. It's time to get this guys out. And place them in a pasta strainer. I'll be sparging this grains with a liter of boiling water. But in the meantime, I'm gonna turn this on to maximum power because we need to get a running boil for the hop additions. Let's parch these grains very gently. You've seen me doing this a couple of times now. All right, so this is it. So while we wait for the wort to get to a running boil in order for us to start the hop additions, I'm gonna talk to you actually about those hop additions. The times when you add them really make a difference. If you're a beginner, you may find it interesting that there are three characteristics that hops offer. The first one is bitterness, second one is flavor, and the third one is aroma. But the hop doesn't add those to the word simultaneously. There is a very simple yet efficient graphic I found in homebrewtalk.com that illustrates those three characteristics in relation with the times when you add those hops to your boiling wort. And this will allow me to give you more details on the times that I've decided to add those hops. So here it is. Okay, so the blue line is bittering, the green line is flavor, and the red one is aroma. According to this graphic, if you want your hops to add full potential of bittering, then you need to boil them for at least 60 minutes. Regarding flavor, they will add their maximum capacity of flavor at 20 minutes. An aroma, you see that after one minute, you start losing this property. 20 minutes after, it's gone. You won't have any aroma. So I have prepared five hop additions. In total, it's 20 grams. It's five portions of four grams each. I could have played with those and, and made them irregular, but I really wanted to keep them square for the time being because I've never done it before. We're going to add the first one at 60 minutes, the second one at 25 minutes, the third one at 15 minutes, the fourth one at 5 minutes, and then we're going to dry hop the last one. So I'm aiming to have full bitterness, a very strong flavor, and as much aroma as possible from those china cups. So if you do a smash and you use the exact same type and the exact same amount of grains that I used, and you also use the same variety and the exact same amount of hops that I used, if your additions are different, you're going to get a completely different beer. This is really what opens a very big door in smash, because at a first glance it looks pretty simple. It's only one mold, one hop. Well, it's not that obvious. With one single mold and one single hop, you can have a wide variety of beers. Just imagine that, for instance, I didn't add five. Imagine I added only two hop additions. Or imagine that I play with the quantities of those hops. I can make it hoppier, less hoppy. I won't say the choice is infinite, but it's very wide. So for this brew, I'm willing to obtain a really clear and pale ale with a lot of hops on it. So you can call it a smash slash Chinook IPA. We'll see about that when it's done. Cheers! Okay, so now we got a running boil and we will add our first portion of hops. These are four grams of Chinook hops. Those will add the bitter flavor to our beer. And I don't have to tell you, but it smells amazing already. Next addition is at 25 minutes before we turn this off. I'll be right back. Cheers! Okay, so now we are 25 minutes before the end of the 60 minute boil, and we add our second portion of Chenna Cups. This is the addition that will contribute to the flavor of the beer. 
Okay, last 10 minutes of the boil, and we're gonna add three things at the same time. Hop addition, quarter of a tablet of protofluck, and the cane sugar. And in it goes. These hops will add aroma to our beer. I don't know if you can see very well the color. It is darker now, certainly, but it's not too dark. So I think we're on the right path for getting a very pale, or at least not too dark beer. And regarding the aroma, the flavor, that's for granted that it's gonna be a beautiful beer. All right, last five minutes of the boil. Time to add our penultimate hop addition. These are the last hops that we will actually add to the boiling wort. These bad boys here will be dry hopped. That means that we will add those to the wort when it's at 20 degrees already in the fermenter. All right, and now it's done! Time to cool down this beauty. Salt is stirring this vigorously until I get 24 to 23 degrees so that it's ready to be transferred to the fermenter. Okay, so as promised, less than five minutes and now this is perfect to be transferred to another pot with a strainer to get rid of the hops. This is now 25 degrees. Once we transfer it to the, to the other pot, we'll get to 20 degrees, which will be perfect to transfer to a container, to the fermenter and pitch our yeast. There you have it. There is our second pot. And in it goes. All right, so now we just have to squeeze these babies out and this is done. Just before pitching our yeast, let's take a gravity reading. Whoops. Well, I guess it'll be easier to read then. So it's 1074. Another success! Yay! Another great strong beer. All right, so let's pitch our yeast. There you have it. I just poured it into the fermenter and you can see the color is, I would say, amber, medium amber. And hopefully it will be close to this at the end. There in the back you can see the hops we have left for dry hopping. Now it's time to pitch our yeast. What I did here is I divided the content of this packet into two using the, the scale and as you can see I taped it so it's ready to be used again. But here we have approximately 5.5 grams of S33 and in it goes. And now time to add our dry hops. So there you have it, it's done. Now all we have to do is put our airlock, which is sanitized. There it is. A little water, carefully, is fine. And there it is. This is officially done. Now we have to wait seven to ten days and it will be ready to be bottled. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, I've placed our smash next to her sister. So it's all done now. It's only a matter of time and patience. 
since I have never brewed this type of beer before, I don't know how much it will take. I don't have a margin of, of comparison. I think it should be the average between 7 and 10 days, probably a little bit more. But in any case, I'll keep you posted. For next week, I've got a hard one. I'm going to try to make my first clone. I'll keep the name of the beer secret until then, but I can tell you it's a very well-renowned beer at least here in the UK, but I've read that in the US it's also famous. I would say it's a classic beer. It's a beer that has been there out in the market for quite a long time now. And of course it's a beer I love. This is going to be the first time I actually follow a recipe written by someone else. Let's see how it goes. So this is it for this week. I hope you find it interesting. I hope you find it useful and I hope you try your own smash. If you have brewed a Chinook smash, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like what you see, thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as usual, thank you very much for watching. Cheers and beers!